I'm Henry Grossman. Welcome to the first video tutorial of parametric design for fall of 09. We're going to go through the parametric glasses exercise that I did in class. So the first thing that we need to do is we need a start point. So I'm going to create a parameter for uh, a point parameter for the origin point. I'm going to right click and rename it origin point. Um, and I'm going to switch over to Rhino and draw a point. Come back to Grasshopper, right click on it, set one point, and pick it. So now it's gone from orange to gray because it's, it's mapped to that point. Um, the axis that we want to revolve around is uh, parallel to the Z axis. So what I'm going to do is translate that point um, with a move component. Move takes two inputs, uh, some geometry, in this case the origin point, and a vector. So if we go over to vector here, we have a kind of pre-made Z vector. And if we right click, we can kind of set the default magnitude of that vector to be, I don't know, 35. So if we now attach that Z vector, right, we translated our origin point. So I'm going to create a, uh, another parameter. I'm going to call it uh, axis endpoint. I'm going to turn off the preview on the move component. And now if I go over to curve menu under primitives, I can get a line component. And a line will simply be an abstract machine to draw a line between two points. So it takes an origin point, or a start point, we'll use the origin point, and an end point, we'll use the axis end, and it draws a line. So I'm going to create a parameter for that, uh, and I'm going to call it revolve axis. So again, if I turn off the preview, hook it up, that's going to be our axis. Now if you remember what I did in class was to create the profile curve, I started with the origin point and I translated it over first uh, in, in X. So I'm going to take a move component, which is going to start with our uh, origin point, and I'm going to get an X vector. Sort of by default, you can see the default magnitude is 1. But I want that, that uh, translation, that's a sort of central part of our design. So I'm going to create a, a parameter for it, a number, and I'm going to call it uh, base radius. Hook up the base radius. You can see everything turns orange right now because the base radius doesn't have its empty. Um, so it needs, needs some input. So I'm going to make a slider. And if I double click the slider, I can set its upper limit, I set its upper limit to be 25. So if I hook up the slider to the base radius, the base radius sets the magnitude for the x vector. This x vector is one of the two components to the move. So when I change the radius, it moves my point. That's great. So the to make the rest of the points on the profile curve, I did a similar operation, but I moved them both in X and in Z. So let's, let's get the move here. Let's think about this in the abstract. So we took one parameter is the point that we're moving, let's call it the in point. Okay. And the first thing we do is we move the in point in X. And we move the endpoint in X according to another parameter. Let's call that the X translation. And we can we can just copy and paste that slider and use it to feed our X translation. And in this case we're going to take, oh, you know what I didn't do? 
let's create a parameter for that first point we created. I'll we'll call it point one. So I'll turn off the preview to the move. So point one is going to become our in point for point two. And you can see what's happening is we're already translating point one in X. I'm going to highlight the move here. I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to take the output of this move and I'm going to put it into the input of this move. And right now it's still got the X vector hooked up to it, but that's not how I want to move it. I want to move it in Z. If you look at a front view, front view is in the XZ plane. So I'll take a Z vector. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight that parameter and that slider and I'm going to copy and paste them and I'm just going to reuse them. But I'm going to rename that from X translation to Z translation. So now the output of this move that's our That's our output point. So we take an input point, and we take an x vector with our magnitude that's set according to the slider, and we move it. Then we take that moved point, and we take a z vector with its magnitude set by this slider, and we move it again, and then we set that to be the output point. That's this one. So I can turn off the previews to these moves. And that output point, I just copy and paste. That's going to be our point two. All right. So if I turn off the preview here, turn off the preview on this guy. Right here, this stuff, this is all stuff we can reuse. It's just a little machine that takes an input point and two numbers that tell me how much I want to move in X and how much I want to move in Z and gives me an output point. So if I highlight them, I can say arrange, make cluster, for some reason it skips over there. And I can rename that cluster move point X Z. And what's good about that cluster is I can now highlight this whole thing and copy and paste it can use it again because I can take my point two and make that my new in point. And now I get and I can call this point three. So now point three moves according to these sliders. Point two moves according to this slider. And if I go to logic and I get a merge three, I can take each of those points and merge them into one list of points. And the reason I want to do that is because here, under the curve tab, I can go under spline to in the interpolate component. And the interpolate component will take this list of points as an input and it will make a new spline. So now I have a list of points, or now I have a spline and I have an axis. And so I have all the ingredients I need for my revolve, which I will do in the next video.